content warning, detailed discussion about the loss of a loved one. I am going to do everything in my power to not get tears here. Our family went from five to four, and it's just the weirdest thing in the world. It's just not. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. We made it out. Sorry if this sounds like the scariest podcast on the planet. Lo didn't have all rainbows and butterflies. I thought it was normal to go to sleep every night with parents screaming at each other. I love you. I love you too. (laughs) Wear them donuts. (laughs) Wear them donuts out. Is this episode almost done? Hi. Hey, it's Sarah and Lo Beeston, your Fairly Odd Sisters. Woo! Woo! Yeah! Yeah. I know holding this. the box of <laughs> tissues if it tells you anything about what this episode is going to be i have donuts on the way <laughs> and sir is holding a box of kleenex if you aren't watching this could just be a completely regular episode apparently and Honestly, i just we would could cry. not cry but i'm gonna do everything in my power to not get tears here but don't force yourself to hold back on anything because of that like don't be embarrassed i think that it's okay that you're emotional. I just don't want to be known as the <laughs> emotional person because I can, can tell you I'm usually. Can Cleanest just sponsor us at this point? Seriously. Like, gosh. I can tell you that I am not. This is why this is different for me because I normally do not express my deep feelings. And for some reason, on the last few podcasts, they just keep bringing this. It's I bringing f- it to the surface. I feel that the podcast has become a sort of therapy <laughs> session I because guess. we're reliving moments that are hard, that are happy, that are sad, yes. that are, you know, everything yeah. in between. And so it just brings things up. Yes. That you're I, not used to talking about. Yes. <laughs> and just so candidly. Yeah. But we're really we're going to make it through this episode. I promise. We're going to we'll make it there. through. Um, we wanted to chat a little bit about how growing up was for us our childhoods and how they're different um and what our childhoods look like I think something that from the outside you might think everyone else has a normal life or a normal family based on what the outside appearance is or because they have a normal family now um but the the true case of the matter (laughs) after getting to know everyone's backgrounds and where they came from in their childhoods Honestly, no family is normal, in quotes. Or perfect. Or perfect. Like, everyone goes through something. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just so, like, I just hope that if you're feeling like you're the only person going through something with your family or anything like that, you're not alone. Everyone has their things. And yes. so we kind of wanted to touch on touch on our childhoods <laughs> and it's <laughs> woo, woo-hoo, which is exciting Yay. so do you want i think i should maybe go first with talking about mine don't you think i don't know maybe let's just rip the band-aid off for me and we can <laughs> keep moving <laughs> hi ho oh, hi ho hi ho let's go off to work we go <laughs> um also, if you want to talk about yours first, we can. Can I just say that I had a, I had, when I watched the dream episode that we did. Did you have a dream about Harry Styles? No, but that would be pleasant. But no, it wasn't that. It was, Crossing my fingers for tonight. I was watching it and I was so disappointed in myself that one of my triggers didn't come to light during the episode. What was it? Which is when somebody says, dream, dream. <laughs> dream dream was, dream dream yes. i can't believe i missed that opportunity like i was watching the episode and in the beginning we're like dream dream you were dream. getting triggered I, by yourself i was like oh here i'm gonna i'm gonna say my trigger uh, which is dream 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 there it is and it didn't ever come out which it is just a came to light it just came out just came to light yeah so anyway. do you feel better i feel way better oh, because okay, <laughs> when we were watching it even tanner we were watching it and tanner was like tanner oh, triggered wait why didn't you do the thing oh. he's like that's even making me feel like i'm you know yeah. holding something in and it can't oh. come out so i don't know my triggers are wearing off on people they i just are. gotta say i just know i'm surprised i didn't think about it either because normally i call the trigger before lauren does it yeah and i think that they're a little bit contagious yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because once you know a trigger it's hard to not you just say the trigger because you just know what it is yeah 
Anyway, good time. just thought I would open that with a little bit of silliness before yeah, give me, we give get me into the deep light. dives. No, give, yeah. me, give me someone else. What's uh, happening in the world today? I don't know. Actually, that let's could not know. We, don't, we don't do that on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Sarah. <laughs> Just the way you said that I makes know, me feel like I'm feel in therapy. Like, no, I have to get serious, but it's hard because like we just keep laughing you know, at each other. Yeah. And yeah. I and we might I say sometimes cope with laughter. With a little bit of laughy taffy, and that might come off as we're wacky dacky. But it's actually just we don't want to talk about this. <laughs> I'm being forced. I'm just kidding. <laughs> being forced against my will. I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so what was it like in general growing up in the Clifford household? Mm, it was actually good. So this is this is good. Let's yeah, start off. Let's start here. I look back at my childhood as really positive that's so good there are things that were a little weird now looking back I think you do that as an adult Mm. looking back you think oh that wasn't normal but in my childhood I thought it was totally normal yeah but overall I had a really great childhood and my parents are awesome and uh I thought it was great I had friends that lived by me I feel like I was really active I was outside a ton I had everything that I could want or need felt like my parents always made it feel that way mm-hmm. so growing up I I have two siblings so an uh, older sister and a brother and my older sister she's passed away now but she was eight years it's kind of interesting so I'm throwing this out there Lo and I all have the same age gaps the same amount of kids in our family mm-hmm. and it's it's kind of crazy to it's think really about crazy she has an older sister is nine she years eight, older nine than nine years me. so i think my sister is eight years and then jesse's five years older than me so just like and barely off my brother's three years older so it's the same dynamic yeah. as far as that Very goes weird. we're both kids, the youngest both the youngest yeah mm-hmm. interesting i Super always weird. think about that when, i know anyway <clears throat> so Yeah, my older sister and I got along so well and loved each other and just clicked amazing. And it was just kind of Ryan, my my older brother, was just a little harder to deal with. And so we we constantly would argue and fight and our parents would have to like split us up. And at one point I was like, oh my gosh, like I can't, we just couldn't stand each other. Mm. And it just got to the point where I, I remember feeling like I actually like hate you like I it is such a strong word but I would get to the point where I felt like that Mm. and and it's so bad looking back because we now have a really great relationship like really it's so wild to think of that to think back at that I'm like was that real like holy cow it's just we we knew how to he knew how to push my buttons Mm -hmm. and I got to a point where any little thing would just set me off and we just were in this cycle and my poor parents, I just love yeah. that. I did really care about him though. As much mm-hmm. as I say like, oh, there were moments where I just did not like yeah. him. I I definitely loved him. We had moments where we would get along super well if mm-hmm. we were causing some mischief, we would get into some pretty crazy things. We would throw oranges at walls. Like we, yeah. <laughs> we were maybe a lot to handle, I don't know. But yeah, I remember thinking that my childhood is overall really great. Mm -hmm. I loved my parents. I loved my family. And yeah, I got to do sports and I got to do activities that I like to do, even though we weren't always financially stable, Mm -hmm. especially when I was in my younger childhood, my parents really struggled with finances Mm -hmm. and uh, they were really good to make sure that we never knew. Mm -hmm. But now talking to my mom being older she would say, oh, yeah, like we would have $10, $15 your dad would give me for the week for groceries. My and gosh. I would have to go and try and meal plan and figure out how I can feed you guys with this amount of money going in. And I had so many times where I was at the cash register and the checks would bounce and oh I would just plead with the workers. And and I honestly had no idea that that was going on That's until later wild. in my life. So they did a really good job of like sheltering us mm-hmm. from that. And I don't ever in my early childhood remember them arguing or anything like that. So I got to commend them for that because yeah. being that financially unstable, I feel like it would be so hard to keep that for sure. from your kids. And yeah. and maybe my older siblings have different experiences where they remember it better mm. or remember some of that. But as for me, I truly don't. 
And I remember there was one time, I do remember because this was so just vivid, but they had to come repossess our car because we could, my dad couldn't mm. make the payments. And it was my favorite Jeep that my dad would always take us in. And I remember sitting again at the window and they just came and took the car away. And I just didn't know why it was. That's sad. They just couldn't pay for things. And my dad filed for bankruptcy and it was, it was just that is so wild. hard for them. And, mm-hmm. but I always felt like I had enough. We were, we could play outside, I, you know, mm-hmm. going back. It never affected me in a, in a negative, negative way, way mm-hmm. as far as that goes. Other things, um, just early childhood. I, <laughs> this is so, this is actually funny looking back now. <laughs> um, so my parents from the very beginning slept in separate bedrooms of the house. And yeah. in our house, we had three levels to our house. <laughs> <laughs> Our, uh, our basement. They've done this since they were married, like the beginning of time. I actually don't know. No, I think they, I think they did. They slept together when they were first married and then it got to the point where I think my dad started snoring and he just said, you're out. My mom just was like, (laughs) see ya. No, you're You're not done. And it's not even, I think they tried all these options of putting beds in the same room and seeing, and my mom just really struggles with sleep. Yeah. She's, doesn't she have like sleep apnea? She still struggles with it. it? Insomnia. Yeah. She has a lot of that. Like insomnia, restless legs, just, she's such a light sleeper that any noise and my dad is a snorer Mm -hmm. and she just realize she couldn't function and be a happy person so Mm -hmm. from my childhood me thinking this is totally normal that mommy and daddy have separate bedrooms yeah uh it's just funny to me because my dad was down in the dark depths of the basement and it was unfinished so there were like (laughs) black widows and concrete and And dust dust and and it was just (laughs) just no walls and my dad is just down there with his bed and our toys are kind of storage is down there our food storage so funny everything and there's just a bed in the little office yeah really pretty trashy honestly (laughs) like looking back i didn't think anything of it yeah when i see pictures i'm kind of shocked he lived down there yeah and my mom was just up on the third floor (laughs) It's like, I don't know why I have really bad allergies every day, but yeah, exactly. So, and she was up on the third floor. So I remember having a memory of going to my friend's house that lived (laughs) next door to me. And I walked into their house and I go, and like, this is my mommy's bedroom. And I'm like, where's your dad's bedroom? (laughs) Where does your dad sleep? They sleep in the same room. And it and kind of were, blew my mind. We were like, like why what? would they do that? Like, like what? what? <laughs> so it's just kind of funny looking back, realizing to me, it was just normal. Yeah, I that's thought, so oh, funny. Oh, mommies and daddies sleep in separate bedrooms. But yeah. then all my friends' parents didn't do that. They yeah. had one bedroom, one bed. So and you were just a little shocked by I that. Just, just a little... <laughs> Just a little shocked. So little old me. Grow, so kind of envisioning your future, did that alter how you wanted to be with your husband? Did you think we're going to have separate bedrooms? No. And I'm grateful for that. You never thought that? I never thought that. Even though you knew how I your parents I was just lived. excited to be able to sleep with my I partner. Know, like like just, in a bed. just a little sleepover. Another yeah. thing in my childhood, I wasn't allowed to have sleepovers. So oh. I think the thought of being able to sleep with a man yeah it was fun <laughs> was fun to my me. gosh so that's so crazy. i think derek actually has that that fear though he thinks mm. if i start snoring oh he's like just scared instantly you're gonna, get gonna like want to separate bedrooms oh my gosh which is funny because he's just seen yeah that from my parents uh-huh. and and even to this day my parents live in separate quadrants of yeah. the house yeah <laughs> which is <laughs> which is what works, works for them it works perfectly for them yeah. and honestly and they're, happy. they're happier that way so mm-hmm. Hey, more hey, power to you. To each their own. Exactly. Yeah. Overall, I have 95% good memories at mm. my childhood That's house. That's so good. Yeah. And and then my family ended up moving when I was 10 years old. I was just going to, I was just going to go into my fifth grade class mm-hmm. and I was devastated. I did not, I loved my friends. I didn't want to move and it was in the middle of fifth grade yeah and I I had already got accepted into the class I had all my friends in it Mm -hmm. and I was so excited and I never really even got to say goodbye to a lot of them that I was going to school with I just didn't show up at school Oh, that's really sad because I was so young I was 10 or whatever so like I could drive or pick up the phone oh my god I just saw them at school that is so sad yeah and 
So we ended up moving to a different little city in Linden and the house was definitely nicer and I was kind of shocked. I, you could tell it was an upgrade. Yeah. And so I, I realized that point, okay, like work must be doing good, better, better for my parents. And we were moving close to my cousins. I was really stoked and I started at a new school and it was, it was hard I remember at the beginning to make friends Mm. and I feel like I went through a few friends that I was friends with but I wasn't happy I wasn't connected Mm -hmm. until I'd say towards the end of the year then I found friends that I really loved and connected with which was awesome and I loved the rest of my elementary school so it was fine even though we moved and then junior high I loved junior high everything was great and then shiz hit the fan for my family. I was in seventh grade and I, my brother was in ninth grade. So we were at the junior high oh, together. Okay. And so we got a call over the intercom saying can, and it was during our like flex time where we called it E time. Yeah. Not really sure. Just like a downtime. <laughs> Just a downtime class. Where you could but... go do an activity and mm-hmm. whatever. So Right before lunch. Yes. And so they say, can Ryan and Sarah Clifford please come down to the office? And I remember meeting him going, what the heck did you do? Why are we here? Because of you. (laughs) You thought it was like a principal's office I thought it was a principal office. Like, yeah, totally. I thought we were in trouble. Mm. I thought it was Ryan's fault because (laughs) usually when we were in the principal office, it was Ryan's fault. Were you there often? That happened in elementary school where Ryan, we got called, I got in trouble in the principal's office. From Ryan? From Ryan. How did you get in trouble? I got grouped in because I was sitting next to him. No. And I did nothing. (laughs) Anyway, so this is another scenario where this is what I thought was happening mm-hmm. he's like I didn't do anything and we're kind of yeah. arguing even going to that's the, funny going to the office and then uh I one of the principals or the vice principal said um I'm so sorry your sister has been in an accident your aunt is here to pick you up mm-hmm. and I honestly at that point wasn't thinking it was anything crazy I just yeah. thought oh okay like she broke her leg yeah. or something was wrong and so but I did think it was a little strange that my aunt was coming to pick us up yeah. and I could tell the second we got in the car with my aunt that things were a lot worse than than what I was imagining mm-hmm. and the fact that they were pulling us both out of school and she just her voice was shaky and she I'm sure was holding back like for us but she probably knew a lot more talking to my parents anyway so she said hey we're, we're gonna go to the hospital Oh my gosh. Here we go. Tissues. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're just, I remember every, it's so crazy how something like that you can remember so vividly. So we go to the hospital and I see a lot of my family members there. And, uh, yeah, I, some of it's a little blurry and I think that's just cause my brain has In blocked shock. that out. Yeah, and I I was just kind of confused at what was going on. And they said, okay, like, I see my parents and they are just a wreck, like a wreck. And we had some church member leaders that were there. And I just knew that this was so much more serious than than what I was thinking. And so we walked into, I can't even look at you, you know, (laughs) that's why I'm looking at the camera. Oh my gosh. Um. So we, we walk in and, uh, I see my sister and she's on the hospital bed and she has tubes in her mouth and, uh, sorry, oh man, it's so hard because I'm like, this is, it's so hard. She's my best friend, you know? Okay, sorry. Do you need to take a break? It's okay. Okay. So I see her and... Um, my parents, this all happened pretty quickly and they're like, okay, um, you need to, you need to say goodbye to your sister. She, she's not going to make it. And, uh, so yeah, I just remember, uh, thinking over and over that she was just going to wake up and, and she looked so normal and just her eyes closed, which is amazing for the circumstance for what the car looked like. And, uh. Yeah, so 
I just went over and I, I hugged her for a long time and just laid on her lap and yeah, I can't, yeah, um, sorry, I can get through this, um, my brother and I both just held her hand for as long as we needed to and we cried, everyone cried, um, just so many tears and, uh, I remember thinking, that this was not real and this isn't happening. And I kept thinking it's so sad looking back, but I was pretty young. I mean, I was like 13, but I just remember thinking, no, she's going to wake up. Even though people are telling me she's gone, I kept thinking she's going to wake up. And that's the only thought that was kind of getting me through other than the shock, the complete shock. And uh, I, I knew that I didn't want to stay in there very long was kind of like my way of protecting myself I think I kept thinking if I go downstairs she's just gonna wake up and it'll be fine and obviously I think deep down I knew that that wasn't the case because people were telling me that and that I needed to just say my goodbyes and it was just so sudden like looking back it just is so crazy how I went from arguing with my brother about something stupid and then we're at the hospital like an hour later and my sister's gone and I didn't I don't even remember the last conversation I had with her like I don't remember anything and I remember just being down in the at the hospital like lunch area the cafe and um my friend called me and I and this is I think where like really hit me because she she was my best friend and she just said what's going on like is is Amanda okay and I just at that point like I it hit me like I had been sobbing and I knew but it just like hit me because I had to say the words like she she's she dead like she died and uh yeah I couldn't even really finish that phone call I just like couldn't do it and uh I remember people just trying to come up to me and take me and Ryan away and uh, my parents and I don't even remember being with my parents during that time a lot. It was just random family members and people just trying to take us and then my aunt, which is, she's an angel, she said, okay, just, you need to come to my house and hang out with your cousins. We were all so close and so we just went there and honestly, like the rest of that day, as, as vivid as the whole first part of it was, the rest of that is just a blur. And, um, yeah, my life just got flipped upside down. Um, I remember going back to the house, like, later that day, and, and I had to be in her room with all of her stuff and all of the memories and the, like, all her favorite things. And, uh knew that I had to, at some point we were going to have to go through all of that and just like it's so crazy how every memory can just flash back to seeing a stuffed animal or seeing a book that she read to me or just everything and I remember doing that and being none of our family members wanted to even go in her room for a long time because it was just such a weird thing and I think just as a 13 year old I just couldn't process it really well and I kind of just wanted to run away and get away from it and I didn't want to be at our house and uh yeah so obviously that was really hard and we had the funeral a few days later and yeah it just was a wreck and her funeral was beautiful and there were so many people there and it was just people spilling out of the back and just so many people that loved her and so it was it was just crazy it's a lot of it's a blur but there are pieces that are very vivid to me Mm -hmm. and uh our family just really was not the same after that obviously my parents just lost a child so I lost a sister my brother lost a sister and our family went from five to four and it's just the weirdest thing in the world it's just not and she was just so young and just she was 20 20 yeah just 20 years old and getting started in her life yeah yeah and uh my we all chose to handle it in different ways and I'm honestly embarrassed to say it but like I was definitely more of an avoider Mm -hmm. I I never really 
even to this day, like have a hard time letting people in about it or Mm -hmm. talking about it. And I'm not really proud to say I was an avoider, but that was like my coping skill was to just like, you're all you're trying to do is protect yourself. Yeah. And and, and totally. I was like a teenager and uh, I just felt really alone during this period of my life because my sister and I were insanely close and my brother and I weren't and I felt like we didn't lean on each other at all he kind of grieved in his own way and then I grieved in mine and my parents were just off the rails with completely understandable Mm. why but they handled it both in very different ways Mm. my mom was very strong for our family Mm. I I will always look back and say that that is something that is the most impressive to me is that she was the rock for our family and at the time like we butt heads like crazy but she got us through that she Mm. really did and um maybe that's why I'm so protective of my mom because Mm. I know that and uh my dad he went down a very dark path after that and he did not cope well Mm can't blame anyone for how they handle this but you can't you can't anticipate anything like this happening yeah and how you're gonna react and and that that was his baby girl and she Mm. she was gone Mm. after 20 years like I just think about my own kids and I just I can't my brain shuts off because I can't fathom um as hard as it was for me they lost a, a child so my dad just was so angry and my mom kind of clung to to her faith and that's what she did and she was the positive we're gonna get through this but in combination that wasn't great for my dad because he didn't understand how she could be so okay okay with it and not that and she, she was she was not okay with it but, <laughs> but in his eyes that's like what he's seeing like why aren't you grieving the way i'm grieving yes and does. my dad was just so angry and uh his faith went out the window and um so the rest of my teen years it was kind of whatever I could do to not be at the house Mm. a lot I mean I still love my parents and we had really good times but uh we had some really bad times too and I I remember fighting and arguing and definitely got to a point where I didn't think my parents would stay together Mm -hmm. and yeah my brother and I fought it was just like a pretty toxic environment during my my teenage years just after this tragedy just shut our whole family into Mm. oblivion. Yeah, so there were plenty of issues after that, and I think we all kind of just went in our own lanes. We kind of just, as a family unit, just broke apart. Mm. Yeah, and I just kept thinking, like, oh, my life would be so much better if my parents would just finally get a divorce, like, just split up. Like, just do us a favor. And that's kind of (laughs) what I thought. So I was in my own way dealing, but I was kind of also rebelling and just avoiding it, just avoiding. And if my mom would try and bring it up and talk to me about it, I just would shut down and I didn't, I'd say, I don't want to talk about it. Like, I feel like I didn't really even start talking about it until my adult years. Mm -hmm. And honestly, looking back, our, our family could have used some therapy, trauma therapy or Mm -hmm. something just from going through that. But it just seemed like it wasn't a therapy is now like a good thing and i it just I, is, people it was looked talk about down on back then yeah. like almost you're so weak that you have to go to exactly. therapy and that's and, not the case yeah and so my my whole child my whole teenage years i felt like i had to put on this strong face for everybody and everyone and you're just like, i'm okay even though yeah, it's not I, okay. and i would just say i'm okay yeah i'm fine and i never even really had real conversations about this until i was married honestly yeah. until i was getting to that point I did have some in high school obviously I had some serious boyfriends that I had conversations with but nothing like that was healing yeah. to me even now I feel like I could benefit for, from some of that but yeah yeah so I would say up until then it was just, there was a lot of good mm. a lot of bad Our, my I just knew that my parents were just like distant from each other yeah now looking back at that my parents are doing better than ever. Mm. I, it, it, here we are. It's and they wild are, that they could make it through something yeah, like my, that. My dad has I can't turned, imagine. Yeah, I know that that's a huge reason that people 
most can't Split up. stay they together cannot after that. After, and I loss of a fully child. understand why. Again, I'm not knocking my parents for oh. for any of this because they're they are amazing parents, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, they they made that they made the decision that they love each other and they want to stay together. They didn't want their relationship to be like this, and they've just literally built it back up from the ground. <laughs> and it's from wild because I've met them. And could never have imagined them not yeah. being okay. Yeah, and and they're they're doing awesome now, and they decided to fight it out. And I had a I had so many. This makes it sound like my teenage years were just a dark, deep hole. And I had such great memories, and I was really happy. And both I, can exist. Yes, it, Hard it's such a weird can happen, thing. And you can also be okay yeah, sometimes. Exactly. So I look back at. Yes, these are the hard things I went through, but my junior high up till like leaving the house was so awesome. Mm. I have amazing memories. I don't think I was sad. I don't think I, yeah, I think I was super happy actually yeah. for that's really 80% good. of it. There was just things of like, I don't want to be home a lot. Yeah. I don't like my parents rules and just stupid teen things. Mm-hmm. And this would come up every once in a while, but in our family unit was pretty messed up, but overall still, it was great. Honestly, yeah. my childhood is, I am feel super blessed to have the childhood that I had and the parents that I had and, and even the brother that I had, even though it was, it wasn't it, as, it was hard, at, hard at the beginning, but yeah, but that's, that's my trauma. Yeah. There, there you go. Mm. Um, Lo didn't have all rainbows and butterflies. No, either. but can we end on uh, maybe if you're comfortable sharing one fond memory that you can think of with you and Amanda? Yeah, that is. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh well. Mm. If you don't want to, no, no, I do. I just said. Uh, um. Ooh. Well, there's there's quite a few. We were we were always uh, staying up really late, or I would sneak into her room like all the time, and she would just like read to me, and we would talk. And um, I really appreciate her for this because I was so much younger than her, but we were just like best buds. Like there there was one time she you would appreciate this actually. She went through all of the Breaking Dawn books and she had a blue <laughs> highlighter and she highlighted every sexy no. part. <laughs> she went through, she would read them the night of. So she would like wait in those crazy lines and she would go and she'd get the books, all the Harry My Potters, girl. all the Lord, Lord of the Rings, Rings, all the Twilights. And she would just wait by the door and she'd be the crazy person that would sit up and read them all through the night, finish them by morning. And when Breaking Dawn came out, she went through and she blue highlighted all the parts that I was too young. <laughs> She's like, do not read. Do not. Like, yeah, all those scary <laughs> parts. so sweet. And every single night after my mom would, we would, I would go to bed and my mom thought we were sleeping. I would go into her room and she would just read me Breaking Dawn oh. and she would read me all the Twilights and, uh, frick. Um, yeah, she would like, uh, teach me. I suck at drawing, but she would, <laughs> by the way, um, she would teach me how to draw. Um, we would play music together because she played the flute and I played the violin. Uh, yeah, I remember she went to college and she had her own little apartment and I thought it was so fun. And my mom would let me go over there and have sleepovers with her. Um and I just remember thinking this was like the coolest thing ever that we could just hang out and stay up super late. My mom wasn't there and <laughs> Ryan wasn't there and yeah. my parents weren't there. And I could just like hang out with her and her older college roommates. And it was so fun that she would bring me along, even though I'm sure she like didn't. No, I'm sure she loved it. <laughs> no. Yeah. But those are just a few, a yeah. few, a few good memories. But well, we I did, can... we did have a family trip to Hawaii, uh, Mm-mm. pretty pretty recently before she passed away and we had tons of great moments with her there which is special now thinking about it was Honolulu and no we got to do all of that with her and it's fun looking back because Hawaii has become such a huge part of my life and that's definitely like a highlight I remember when I think about her so well, all yeah, I can we had lots say of good times. is what you've said about her. I just wish I could know her. She's, she's sounds awesome. amazing. She, she's definitely quirky, but so amazing. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. She well, reminds me of Lisa a lot, actually. I was going to say the parallels yeah. are so it, crazy. Yeah. And I think about that, like, it's I'm not trying to, yeah, but I just, it's like so awesome that you guys are so close because you have her and like, it's, I love that you're so close to your family for that reason, because it, it can't be like that sometimes. So yeah, Lisa's awesome. And I feel like I see pieces. Lisa and I aren't even that close, but I, I definitely see similarities and pieces of Amanda through Lisa, which for you, which is amazing. It's kind of the stuff that I like miss out on. Like when Lisa was there for your birth and stuff like that. It's so awesome. But I think it's, I'm not like sad in any way that like, I'm so happy you have that. It's just stuff like that. It just reminds me. Reminds me. me. But I think even though she wasn't there, she was there. So a thousand percent. Yeah. So it's it's really great. But mm. moving on. Mm. <laughs> I just well, I love that you're so close to your siblings and it's so special. So well, I love you. And thank you. Love you. Take it. Take it. Oh, we made it out. Oh, Are you okay? Yeah. We made it out. Sorry if this sounds like the scariest podcast on the planet. Just no. like can't get words out. But um, I will say our family is thriving right now. If you yeah. want to hear something happy. we My brother is happily married. I, happily happy married. My parents there. are and they're great. And I will say that I am a very spiritual person. And I know for a fact I'm going to see her again. So yeah. It's it's happy, and I know that she's been there through times in my life. So I have felt her. I know it's real. So, yeah. She's my little guardian angel. I love Amanda. Yes. Anyway, here we go. That's <laughs> hard to, <laughs> just hard to go on, after. <laughs> just sitting on this box of tissues. Uh, yeah. I don't so. even know if I should share. Oh, my gosh. Every person's experiences are different, and yours is is so hard in its own way <sighs> well thanks for sharing all that i know that was hard for you <laughs> thanks for i sharing. know you hate sharing your feelings i know you guys it's we'll get there i think the more that i share it the more comfortable i i think this is like the first time i've ever gone into like deep detail yeah. about that and i'm sure we'll talk about it more in future episodes or whatever i'm i'm an open book i'm trying to be there for people that Maybe need me to answer questions, but well, you're really strong, and I'm. I know people out there are grateful to hear your experience, yeah. and especially if they're going through something yeah. similar. Well, it actually is crazy because I think just being in this, sharing what I've shared, just a little blips on social media, people are so awesome, mm. and so many people can relate mm. to me. It's everyone loses someone at some point, and it's just. It's never easy. Yeah. And I, even when I've made posts about it, so many people can connect with me and, and relate and say, I lost this person to this or a car crash or this. And it, it's truly amazing to know that you're not alone. This, it's just part of life. It's going to yeah. happen. And uh, yeah, people are just awesome in general for. And I love that. Relating. I like it. It's like almost like a support system yeah, for really each other. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And I feel like I've met cool people just from sharing similar experiences. Well, yeah. Let's, I know a lot of people are grateful. So thanks for sharing. Yeah. That's not easy. Yeah. Let's dive in. <sighs> let's dive into you. Yeah. Start at your childhood. Um, what you yeah. remember. Okay. So my childhood was, I had, honestly, looking back at my younger years, I loved every second, just mm -hmm. like you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed you know, school. I enjoyed my friends. Um, as me and Jesse actually didn't always get along. Shocking, Even though actually. I wanted, I wanted to be in his friend group. He was five years older. He was a little bit of a punk. He would tease me constantly. Like the yeah. amount of teasing was insane. <laughs> and so, every, <laughs> so that we weren't always close, but, um, I think once we, once we, our family went through um, what we went through, we definitely got closer. And I think that's kind of what brought us together. But um, so basically, my parents um, were married 
for 19 years. And so Mm -hmm. what I can remember from when my parents were married is I thought it was normal to go to sleep every night with parents screaming at each other. Like I just thought, yep, this is how we go to sleep. That's all you knew. Is we hear them yelling and they're in a fight and that's how you go to bed at night is that. And then um, a lot of nights my dad wasn't there. Um, He was, he would work in Park City. So he'd be up there and he a lot of times would stay the night up there. Um, So just kind of wasn't a normal, you know, family dynamic. Um, The kids and my mom, my mom is the most amazing person in the world. And I love my dad as well, um, obviously. But I think my mom worked full time and my dad always worked. So there was that dynamic. But um, I just don't know how my mom did everything that she did. Did you ever working. feel like you, your parents weren't there and you, with um, her working and him working and... Not necessarily, no, because that was just always normal. Mm-hmm. My mom had to work. My, um, we didn't have a lot and I always knew it. Like I always knew that money was an issue. Oh, okay. We somehow always had, I was always able to do like softball or like dance or... I ended up doing cheer in high Mm -hmm. school and somehow was able to do everything that I wanted to do. So it wasn't like I felt like I wasn't able to have these opportunities, but I did know that we struggled with money and that's why my mom had to work full time. Um, And so not, I never felt, I felt kind of lucky because that just meant that after school I would ride the bus home with one of my best friends and I got to play and like yeah. hang out with a friend it wasn't, it wasn't a, a negative negative for me thing. Yeah. because then I would come home and my mom would have a meal made for us and yeah. it was it she did the most yeah for what she was given she did she the absolute most yeah and my dad wasn't there a lot and when he was there it was pretty contentious and he's an amazing person but they their relationship was just not good and not happy um and he was kind of struggling so yeah and I think he had a little bit of a temper and so (laughs) um yeah that was tough um yeah thinking back on like good memories as a family unit is hard to remember a lot of the the negative outweighs the the positive a little bit like I love thinking about our family together and I wish so bad that could have been the case but it is easier for me to remember the harder times when we were together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so one day my mom, she actually lost her mom when she was eight years old and she's had moments throughout her life that she's felt her mom kind of be there for her. And one morning she like woke up and she heard like that she needed to go check on my dad, like at work, she needed to go see my dad. And she kind of thought it was a weird thought, kind of ignored it. And then she heard it again, like a couple minutes after she shrugged it off. It was like, go see your husband at work. And so my mom that day was just like, okay, I'm just gonna, you know, that's fine. I'll just go visit him and we'll have lunch and it'll be a good day. Um, and it ended up not being the case. She didn't know exactly where my dad worked. She just knew the city. So it was really interesting because um, she ended up going up with a friend. A friend drove her up. And once they got to Park City, she was like, okay, where where does he work? Yeah. And she didn't have, she was like, oh my gosh, I've, I've never I been there know. before. Wow. And all of a sudden she knew exactly where to turn. Wow. And she would say, go straight here, go left here. It's up here on the right. This is the parking lot. She knew wow. exactly how to get there, which is she just knows that her mom was guiding her there. And so when she got there, she didn't really know why she was there. <laughs> she was like, I guess just let's crazy. call him and see what he's doing. Yeah. And he answered the phone like normal and said, yeah, I'm probably going to stay late tonight. I'm just working. Got the same response she's gotten a lot of times. And then she um, saw him go out and then go into a restaurant with a woman and that's when she found out that that's kind of been what has been happening oh my goodness um so she found out that over the past years that had been the case and um that's when she 
knew that she needed to be separated. And um, that night I came home from my friend's house because this had all gone down. And I saw my brother and my sister sitting on the couch downstairs and she was um, telling them what had happened and that they are going to get a divorce. And then I was upstairs. I didn't know exactly what was going on. I just kind of saw a glimpse of and that. And how old were you at this I point? was, um, I think I was almost nine, okay. maybe just nine. Yeah. And so my friend's mom took me upstairs and kind of waited so my mom could give me a more soft version of yeah. the story because I was so young. Yeah. Um, and then when she came up, I kind of already knew from the look on their faces downstairs something, what was yeah something bad. And with bad. the the contention in the house, mm -hmm. you kind of knew. Yeah, and honestly, at that age, it was crushing to hear. Yeah. Um, I didn't know anyone that had had parents that were divorced, and honestly, in our church that we've grown up in. Um, it, it was, was frowned upon. It was really frowned upon and very much like made you feel like it wasn't Like you were okay. different. Yeah, it wasn't okay. It wasn't the way things are supposed to be. Yeah, and you can't have an eternal family and things yeah. like this that really just shook Stuck my whole with world. You. And Especially being that young, not really having any other life experience and you just think that your family is not going to be a family anymore. Yeah. That would be crushing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, moving forward, it was tough. Um, but honestly, it was hardest on my mom. Yeah. She had then, she was already kind of raising us kids. Um, and then she had to take on the role of, okay, I'm not only having to work full time, but I need to find a better job that's gonna support, you. support my entire, like my family. I need, you know. I need to raise these kids. And Do you mind sharing a little bit about where your dad was in all of this? Did he help her with that stuff? Was he? He was willing to help. I think he has a really, he had a really interesting job that would kind of pay him in chunks and then it was here and there. And so he was willing to help my mom, but um, it was always like never, she never knew when he could help or yeah. how much it would be. Yeah. Um, so she couldn't really rely on an exact amount kind of a thing but he was always I can say that my dad was always willing to you know help out yeah. if my mom needed it um but needless to say my mom was still raising us you know so he didn't he didn't really come around a lot he, he in the beginning I did go more consistently like every other weekend um and then me and my brother would go but then it kind of got less and less consistent because we were all just, it was an, it was at a weird age where we kind of wanted to be with our friends and it was kind of hard to go up all the way, like an hour away from where we yes. lived. We didn't have friends up there and it was kind of just a difficult thing mm -hmm. to do. And mm -hmm. so in the beginning we were better at it and then life just got kind of busy and we didn't see him as much. And, but the silver lining and everything was that my mom um really like I think we only had one Christmas where my dad wasn't invited the fact that she handled <laughs> this whole situation with the grace that she did she's she's unbelievable yeah and letting so, you still have your dad yeah even the stuff that she went through with him but still be a part of your guys's life yeah. and have even though it was probably so uncomfortable for her and she didn't want him there yeah and the says, worst of it is like in those beginning years you know she's it's not like she stopped loving him immediately oh, yeah. it's like you have to your heart's broken and uh -huh. that must have been I just can't imagine how hard that was for her and she just handled it amazingly she we love her yeah we love Lily. she's the best mom in the world and my dad has changed a lot since then as well and I'm so grateful for how he's turned out and become um but it was definitely tough on those years yeah. for sure um but yeah I don't even know what else to say about it other than um I'm like so grateful for my mom mm -hmm. and just how she's handled everything and how hard she's worked yeah. Um, to keep us, cause, cause like I said, we never had money growing up mm -hmm. ever. And 
she always allowed somehow some way she made it work where I could still do cheerleading and I could still you know take piano lessons or I could go off with my friends and go out to dinner like says so much about her that she just didn't even have to worry about that no and I knew it was a worry but it's like she just made it work somehow and And she's such a happy positive person yeah you just would never know yeah and so so would you say that through these years you your brother and your mom were really tight-knit really close yeah so this is right when my sister so we found out about the divorce and then my sister a few months later is going to college Mm -hmm. so for me and jesse we were in the house only you know after that because my sister moved to idaho to go to school and then she got married um and so yeah we became very close and luckily, um, I felt really lonely when it was just me and my mom in the house. Once my brother kind of started being able to drive and then he moved out, um, I felt pretty lonely just because it, I felt like I wanted my siblings there. Yeah. I was like, where's my siblings? At and this then, point, yeah. your dad wasn't really coming around. No, not very much. And I don't want to put blame on him at all. I think it's just the situation of divorce. He did the best with what he... What he did the best he could, could do with, you know, what... Yeah. He's the <laughs> he's the dad I was given and I love yeah. him. And that's it. And mm-hmm. so I think, um, yeah, it was just a little bit lonely. But me and my mom got very close and she continued to work through those years. And... Um, she taught me a lot about how to be hardworking and, you know, still be an amazing mom. She, I don't know how she does well, it all. Well, and all three of <laughs> the kid, all three of you kids turned out unbelievable. So it's just, it shows that she was such a good mom because yeah. she didn't always have the support. The greatest and of the, and gar- cards dealt. Yes. And she was <laughs> going through least. all of that. And I think that just says a lot about who she is because she could have, easily spiraled yeah. and she instead just took on this whole load and made you kids still have a great life and mm-hmm. just says a lot about her yeah awesome. and needless like the house was spotless at all times <laughs> how how she always how had mean? food she, she would make me book. breakfast in the morning <laughs> she would drive me to school she didn't ever make me take the bus like, I would miss the bus every freaking day because I was always freaking late, of course. When you were and a teenager? My mom would be like, Lauren, she never made me feel bad. She would just drive me to school, and then she would go to work. Anytime, I'd be like, Mom, can you check me out? Let's go get lunch. She would do it. Like, she just figured out how to be the best mom and also was working all the time. I don't know how she did it, but she did it all. She's a rock star. And to be a single mom is something else, and... I'll forever be grateful for the way she handled things because she always let my dad come anytime <sighs> we wanted him to, um, never made us feel like he, and we couldn't still invite how him. It is still how it day. is to this day. Yeah. So I feel very grateful because I know it can be so much harder. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I know a lot of people who have gone through their parents have been divorced and you know, it's, been tricky in other situations that can't be in the same room yeah. stuff like that it still is, is very hard yeah i feel like you always try and say <laughs> no it, it was it was good it was yeah. fine but it it's very hard to go through it a young age mm-hmm. like that yeah it was definitely it had its it definitely had its cons and obviously i wish that it never could have played out that way but um for what it was i'm grateful for the way that it turned yeah. out and so how did you feel looking back thinking or how did you cope with thinking that you had a broken family when all these other people around you seem to have these picture perfect families what was that like being a teenager and going through yeah I think it I first I kind of always brushed it off (laughs) growing up I was kind of like you with the avoiding thing and when people would ask me I'd be like everything's fine like we do Christmas together I think you know I think when you're that young that's just the go-to yeah it's like I'm fine totally and I think I was I was just like yeah "Yeah, I'm I'm fine yeah and of course I was sad about it but I think just was what I just pushed things away yeah it's okay well at least we can do this you know and it wasn't until dating Tanner that in high school when I went over to their house and saw the dynamic of parents 
who got along <laughs> and like you weren't seeing arguments. I wasn't seeing arguing and I saw a really present father figure and um just something so different, different than my family dynamic. And it wasn't until then that I start things started clicking of like, okay, that was different or okay maybe that's how it normally is or, yeah. like yeah. things just started clicking more for me when I got older and I saw more examples of it um but yeah it it I definitely have gone through phases of dealing with that um but I always I always come back to like I I don't ever want to blame my dad because Never, he yeah. is an amazing person and I think he did he's my dad and I will always love him and I'll always like he's just my dad and he's who I got as my dad yeah and I will (laughs) say that speaks a lot about you though too because there are so many kids that their parents go through a divorce and and they put blame on one of the parents because it's Mm. especially if it's that do you get what I'm trying to say Mm -hmm. you could be so angry and you could handle it in this way and instead you are always supporting him, making sure he's okay. Um, you always will never say anything bad about him, even though you could. And I think that's really cool of you Thanks. because you're not holding a grudge. You just go, he's my dad. I love him. And even though maybe that wasn't how you pictured your childhood, you still stand by him, love mm-hmm. him. And I think it's amazing. I, I think it's awesome. Yeah, he definitely has so many amazing qualities yeah. that I can see in yeah. myself. That and he's your I, dad yeah, at the end of the dad. day. Like, I do see that a lot with, uh, on the flip side, as I've seen people get angry at parents and never talk to them again mm-hmm. after divorces or a certain parent. There is the people that just realize, okay, no matter what they did, people make mistakes. And yeah that's my dad yeah so, nobody's perfect yes. and his mistakes are more prominent you can see them easier on the outside yeah um but everyone has their things yeah. and I think he has so many great qualities yeah. that I have had so many great discussions with him You've and had he's good memories with him such it's, good memories with him yeah. and uh I love the perspective of I never feel judgment from him I can go to him with something and not feel like you do say that a lot about him. He's the least judgmental judgmental person person. in the world. And he will just cheer you on. He cheers me on like nobody's business. Anytime we do get a chance to talk, he's just telling me how proud he is of me. And so I know he loves me. And so it's okay. It's like, I didn't have a normal, we might not have had like a normal father daughter relationship growing up, but I always have known that he loves me. Yeah. He does love you from what I've seen. He loves you so much. Yeah. And I think more of him not being as having that relationship with you from the outside perspective looks more like it's he feels guilt about you you being so young and not being as present as he could have been and but you never doubt that he loves you because he does yeah i love you i love you too <laughs> where are them donuts <laughs> where are them donuts out is this episode almost done yeah. <laughs> just kidding yeah, just kidding <laughs> Oh man, no, I just think you've, you are so strong and you've handled it so well and your siblings, all three of you continue to love both of your parents and it was not the most ideal. I'm sure you wish that it could have been maybe different, but with what you guys have dealt with, you guys are all amazing. Thank you. Yeah. And so strong. I think I had really good examples too from my siblings, just how well they handled it and how they love my dad and love to look up to yeah and they really taught me like they it's okay that it's okay to to love both and Mm -hmm. even though dad made some mistakes and it's okay to be angry but it's okay to love him Mm -hmm. and it's it's okay to feel all those things simultaneously instead of just one Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah 
<laughs> so yeah, that's me. <laughs> that's me so yeah, life is my freaking like every, it's now out there for everybody. <laughs> oh um, man. So yeah, we just trauma bonded. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is the most trauma bonded I've ever felt. Ugh. Oh no, I think I it is nice to um because I did have a lot of friends where it seemed like their lives were pretty pretty perfect. put together, pretty, pretty perfect and just even us becoming so close, I've been able to talk to you about some of these things and we've been able to trauma bond, if you will. I don't know, but it's, <laughs> it's really awesome to be able to talk to you and I guess all of you, I guess, <laughs> I guess, I guess. Uh, about, <laughs> about this and just feel like it's a safe space. And uh, yeah, maybe I will say that we both, had things in our childhood that we wish were different and but we can't change them and now we're here and I think we're so happy with where our families are at coming out on the other side and I do feel like that speaks volumes to people that maybe your family's struggling right now going through something Um, life doesn't look the way that you think it is but it always gets better and I think a lot of that has to do with how you handle certain situations and what you choose to do with that Mm. because I think when things like when shiz hits the fan there's two options and you just as hard as it is you just got to pick the right the right way and obviously you're allowed to grieve and you're allowed to struggle and And have those crises and be sad and uh but I will say that I think everything gets better with time Mm. and surrounding yourself with good people and uh being able to talk about it is is healthy and Mm -hmm. helpful and as hard as it can be as hard (laughs) as it can be it's good to talk to people because I think generally people want to help and that's something that I still am learning that people are there for you you just have to give them the opportunity to be there for you because if you have a good friend or a family member they're waiting for that but you have to let them mm. help you. And I am still learning that. Oh, speaking currently. of, what's something that you can say to people if they know somebody going through grieving of loss of somebody? <sighs> what's something that you think would be helpful as a friend or anyone yeah. that would want to help or reach out? Oh, this is this is hard because, again, I think grief comes in waves. And, and everyone's different. And obviously. everybody's different with what they want. I think first of all, get to know the person Mm. really well. And I think you'd be able to better judge how they would like to be helped in that way. But I do think that trying to fix it is kind of a no, no, Mm. just generally. I think when people would try and say things to fix it, like it's not going to get fixed. It's 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 just not okay. I think just being there, literally just being there for somebody just saying I love you don't say it's gonna be okay that's another (laughs) thing like I think if someone's in the in the thick of it just hearing those words it's it's not helpful Mm. so I think just a flowers a note a card I love you I'm here if you need to talk just being there just being fully there for them is the best way to help if someone's struggling with this, yeah. unless they bring it up to you, unless they, you know, want to talk about it. Yes. Yeah. But things like fixing it, I don't think so. I did that one friend that I called in the hospital. She, to this day, every year on Amanda's uh, death anniversary and her birthday, will send a text or, and we don't talk, we haven't talked in like, I mean, like regularly in mm. what, how many years has it been? 12 or something. But, And for years after that, even though we weren't close, she would send flowers, like a bouquet of flowers to my house. And I'm like, whoa, like that stuff like that is just, that's what you can do. Yeah. I think, I think that is really nice for people to know because it is hard to know how to to approach these kinds of things. Yeah. It's so sensitive. And a lot of times I think people will retreat and because they don't want to do the wrong thing. Yeah. And And I think. And I think it is on that person too to like know that when people are saying it's not like a one-sided thing. I think for people to understand when someone is saying it's okay, like even though that could be 
set you off a little bit, they are just trying to help mm. to know maybe they don't know how to handle it, but they're trying Yeah, <laughs> not be so harsh on it because yeah. 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 I think it just can always be a lot just because when something happens, it's usually like a flood of people that are saying the same things to you and yeah. it just starts losing its, yep. losing its weight. Yeah. Uh, and I think also something, if someone's going through the loss of somebody, if there's so much help in the beginning, so many people, so many flower baskets, so many muffins, so many yeah. <laughs> like things. And, and there's always people at the house. Usually it's a month later, two months later, the, the things get lonely in. and, and it gets real. And I think reaching out in those times is awesome. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that because I know it's going to yeah. be helpful for people. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> How long have we been filming? Oh, we're we're going to wrap this up. Um, I don't thanks. think I can take any more. <laughs> thank you for joining us in this episode. Um, I think our greatest, I think the thing we can hope for the most from this episode is that somebody can feel not as alone or can relate, can relate and, you know, feel a little bit better. Or in maybe their situation even or realize that our lives are not perfect yeah <laughs> because, even just that <laughs> even just that because people i do think think that mm -hmm. yeah so um anyway we hope you enjoyed this episode and we love you so much so we'll thanks see you for joining time. us we'll let's go get time. the donuts yeah we're gonna go eat some donuts watch, and a, watch a movie, movie and cuddle and relax oh and not gosh. think about sad stuff for a do while do you realize that my my eyes feel like they have like glue underneath them oh your mascara is running too i'm sure oh, great. Is. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like know. one dot <laughs> it's amazing right. well okay love you guys love you bye bye